Welcome back to Wellington! Woo! So, in our last video, hopefully you've caught that, we spent a week basically in central Wellington doing all of the top things to see, to do, to eat and made it into like a bit of a guide, a vloggy kind of guide and it was so much fun because I grew up down here and kind of got to share that with you in a way because it was kind of your first. Yeah, kind of my first time but I've loved it and I've got the feeling that we're going to love today as well because we're doing like the ultimate day trip from Wellington out to the wider upper region and to be honest, I feel like Martinborough is like a vibe. I'm really excited for it. Oh yeah, that's wine region, that's wine country, that's what we're all about. But we're gonna go to a couple of other towns as well because there's a lot going on out there. And to get there, we're making it the ultimate day trip by taking the train. So we're at the train station now and it only takes an hour to get there, which is... Yeah, that's so good. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> When you're on a train, upfront seating isn't all that important. When you're on a flight, we definitely think it is, and that's something that we love about flying with Jetstar. They keep the airfares as low as possible, and if you want to save even more money, you just grab a seat allocated at check-in. Or you spend a little bit extra on some of those luxuries, upfront seating, extra leg room. <laughs> <laughs> but that also means when you're up front is that you often get the food first, sneaky potential side bonus, and it means you get off fast. But for us right now, because I've only come here as a kid, and yeah. for me this was like, wow! But now I'm just like, okay. There's lots of people, but it's like, well, signposts and yeah. stuff. I'm like, sure we'll find out. Like, way. there's 10 lines. We can figure this out. <laughs> Easy. All right, so Wellington actually uses a snapper card, which is like a preloaded just transport card, really. We are going to be taking the train, the Masterton line, all the way to Featherston, which is like, I think about an hour. Um, yeah, so $16 per person each way, which is pretty good considering it's an hour long. Journey. It's a lot of distance, yeah. yeah. it's a long way. Now so we just need to find our train. This is us here, I think, number eight. Right. Yep. Thank you very much for traveling with us today. We do hope the rest of your day go, goes well. Thank you. I do love me some train travel. It's so relaxing and so easy and there is so much to see out the window. That, that hour just absolutely cruised past. Now we're in Featherston. And so we're on a private tour today, but there's all sorts of different options once you get up here. You can obviously take the train and then use public transport. I think probably the best option is either drive yourself or you jump on a, jump on a tour or a wine tour or something like that. And there's plenty of that planned for today. But our first stop is called Say Cheese. G'day. G'day. Does that mean that like each season they taste different or because you do them at the start of the season each year they all... They like should stay the same. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on the time of the year. So got season it. on season, unless you've got dramatic changes in what we're feeding yeah. in pasture. Uh, Which generally should be you don't. No. Yeah. We're really talking all things cheese here. Yeah. This is Paul, the owner of the company. Just, um, the cows are like 20 minutes down the road. They literally go, they pick up the milk first thing in the morning, bring it here to like the creamery out the back here. This is where they go ahead and they make it like straight away organic. And this is like the ultimate start to the day. This is a, cheese, a cheesy breakfast. It's always a good way to start. So they also have loads of other stuff, right? This isn't all their, their stuff. They've yeah. got their one brand. Exactly. So our breakfast platter of cheeses that we had, there were three of them. There was a brie, which is made by Paul here, and then there was an old Eden made up of Kiri Kiri and a blue, blue cheese as well. The blue was unbelievable. You're not a blue fan, eh? No, but I still tried it and it was lovely, but I have to say the brie with some apricot quince paste, mm. chef's kiss. I, I don't know cheese well in terms of how to explain it, but I just said to Paul, like to me, it tastes really balanced. Like it's a, it's nothing is too extreme. Whereas some blue cheese, I feel like it's supposed to just like, psh, psh, just like it's supposed to be like a strong punch. Next stop. This is something we've always wanted to do. Honey, we got the the beekeepers experience, right? The full experience. So we've come to. Come to Greytown, honey. And we're gonna go and meet the bees in person. <laughs> and then we might ask them like, hey, do you mind if we try some of your honey? Hopefully they say yes. I'm excited, I love honey. That's so good, eh? I've always wanted to do this like don the outfit and really like get right up in here. Get right up in here. If, uh, if you've ever wanted to come and get up close and personal with some bees. <laughs> <laughs> this is its front door. 
My recommendation is never to stand right in front of it. <laughs> right where I am. Okay, yeah. okay. I would I'll come just, to the side a I'm like bit. an intruder at their doorstep. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> if you think about it, it's like an international runway where these bees, um, they use the sun and the moon to navigate. Um, and so you weren't standing in their front door when you left, when they left. So you shouldn't be there when they come back. Um, inside the hive they've all got different roles. So it's basically a whole city in each hive. Wow. So these bees here, all from this hive, okay. will all live their life here. Okay. Um, so none of them are nomadic, they don't go and like live somewhere else, they're no. just solely. No. <laughs> so, so the only You're trying to find some people to connect with. Yeah, some nomad <laughs> it's such a fascinating process. Like yeah, that, there's so many of them just chilling and so in these boxes here so maybe just the one box you're on now like how many would be in there uh this is a a, a brand new split so okay. it's, it's really little um when we get into these bigger ones they're getting into the hundreds of thousands wow yeah very cool you're right you're not worried about the no. bees around you no i'm not totally I fine thought, eh? yeah, they're, they're, yeah they are i mean um apparently this is a calm hive so <laughs> I mean, I don't really have much to compare it to, but it, I feel fine. I'm just more fascinated by seeing what's inside and like how it all works. Yeah. So at this time of year, to be honest, they don't care what we're doing. Um, yeah. It's not like we're opening it up and suddenly it's getting really hot um, or re you know really oh, cold. I see. Right. And we're not taking. So they're not pissed off about the conditions. Yeah. Oh, the queen. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the difference. Is it a different pattern on her back as yeah, well? Yeah, she doesn't have stripes often. Yeah, right. Often she's just one colour. Good on you for coming out, Queenie. Good on you, Queenie. <laughs> so you say you like honey, eh? Do you like? Three hundred. Well, it's so solid. That's three hundred kilos of honey in one drum. There's four drums on the top, four drums on the bottom, and about eight different spots with drums on them. So it literally spins and just like flicks the honey off. Yeah. Yeah, so this is where, um, it's like my lettuce spinner. Yeah, totally. It's on a big scale, right? And I'm like, this is how like washing machines work, because it spins all the water, yeah, all the water out. Yeah. Oh, oh. I've really keep it spinning, it keep it spinning. You got it, you got it. You just labeled your own honey, babe. Yes, only like 400 bubbles as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's quite heavy, isn't it? Just like that, how cool. So we got to see the whole process from the bees out there to the factory and then bottling up our own jars of honey to take home. That's awesome. Love eh? it. That's a fun experience. I love this. Yeah, stuff. awesome. Um, Kanuka. Kanuka. Cheers. Amazing. The second one we're going to try. Oh, I love that density. Mm. It's good, eh? Mmm, yum. <laughs> Sweet, obviously. Mm. That's so good, though. It's like a lolly. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. I can't talk right now, but oh, look at the eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, this is Greytown. It's Charmer. like 10 minutes down the road from where we were at um, Greytown Honey. And it is so beautiful. All the buildings are like super old and they've got really cool um, stories here of their own operated, these stores. They're yeah, actually like they're, owned by the people that run them. And like, almost like times of old, like this is Blackwell and Sons because it's yeah. established like by the Blackwells. But even actually just to mention the Greytown Honey, like they were fifth generation beekeepers. So that's the kind of smaller new zealand like yeah. cute old historic buildings that's kind of what you find here i like that I, i'm getting that i'm getting that vibe yeah i get the feeling around here that everyone just kind of like supports each other as well which yeah is nice. they all kind of like come together and like build, they've built this community got to be the most charming <laughs> chocolate shop we've ever seen so this is shock chocolates let's go check it out White was one of the first ones he designed, and same with the lime chili, which I'll put at the end, um, which he designed. Mm, lemon. Mm. Mm. Better than the other one. Then the roast chicken. Murray he used to be a chef, so he took inspiration from all of his food. So he took inspiration one day from a roast chicken, so he took out kind of like the rosemary and the apricot yeah. flavours, put that into a chocolate, and then when you eat it, you legit do taste roast chicken. But in a good way, it's really hard to explain. Okay, so maybe I'm not a fan of absolutely everything chicken. The rest of the chocolate, great. Chicken one, a little bit weird, but anyway, we are now 15 minutes away and we are in Mardenborough. This is the wine region, somewhere we have always wanted to visit. We've been to so many other wine regions around New Zealand. This is one that we kind of were yet to tick off. 
Um, but we were just checking out the square, and it's actually it, like it's really it's really beautiful. There's uh, an old hotel that's got a really nice pub. There's a couple of nice looking restaurants kind of around that. You got a cafe. There's a couple of really nice looking shops. Um, but I mean, the reason that we're here, because we've kind of hinted at many times already, it's about the wine. And so I've secretly I've I've been thinking about this. I've I've secretly come up with a little bit of a plan that I haven't yet told Stace. Um. So Dane's decided it's a good idea to try and get onto those um those joined bikes, which I don't know the name of, but look how cool they are. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Made in Italy as well. Class. Let's say you know it's class. Uh, so they're either called Surrey bikes or crocodile bikes. Crocodile. crocodile. This might be the best idea I've ever had. This might be the coolest motor transport we've ever been on. <laughs> I don't know why there's two steering wheels, but you're cut off. Okay, you can pedal, why? but you can't steer. Mine? Oh wait, mine doesn't actually move. Oh, oh, you got that fake one. No, I'm driving. I got the driver. I can barely reach the pedal. This is this is this is not great. <laughs> This is the best way. The I best way to cycle. I'm loving it. I, you know what? The only thing that Coming could here. add to this would be electric crocodile bikes. <laughs> Lazy! Oh, when you together. have two people contributing, oh, there is a car coming. <laughs> and so we're on our way now to the Golden Mile. Because there are over 60 boutique wineries with over 20 of them all close together in one little area. I like to thank the people on the normal bikes may have made a better decision. <laughs> this is really hard. There's no gears on this bike. So like when you're just on the flat, you're literally like barely moving. That's why we're puffing. <laughs> I think the thing is there's no momentum. Yeah. So the, also though, we're gone from town to probably one of the Fairness. most the farthest away. Yeah. If we'd stopped it in the others, you're just doing a little like 400 meter stints or 200 meter stints. That would be easier. Oh. We're gonna crack a couple of kilometers and my thighs are burning. <laughs> but once you stop, the whole thing slows, so. Keep cycling! Keep cycling. <laughs> so this is the run holder. So it's kind of a little bit of a collective because they have the Martinbra Vineyard, Tikaranga, and then also Lighthouse Gin. So it's kind of, uh, they have a little one. bit of everything. And they've got the restaurant too. Which we haven't been through yet, but from what I've just peeked at. It looks beautiful, stunning. The most beautiful, like architecturally, Stunning vineyard. It's more than a vineyard. Though, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? It is. yeah. Anyway, cheers. So, what's this one? Sorry, this was the this is the Pinot Gris. Yeah, the Pinot Gris. Wow, instant fruit. Oh yeah. That is mm. absolutely mm. delicious. Like fruit forward instantly. Mm. Short finish. I think Beautiful said glass. You can, you can go back for more. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So. The food has been incredible, just as amazing as the scenery. We have had some amazing lime port snapper raw, beautiful. We have had some lamb cutlets. They were probably my favorite. They were so good. So good. A kind of like a potato terrini type thing. You know when it's like layered and crispy and beautiful and had a sauce in the bottom. And then what else did we have, babe? We had um, beautiful sourdough with bird butter and an heirloom tomato salad. Chef's kiss. This is my second chef's kiss of the day. And then to end, we had a dark chocolate dessert with, I don't even know what, but it was amazing. So good. That pretty much wraps up the day. So much fun. So, if you come into Wellington, like, highly recommend. I think you've got to come. This is a must. Yeah. You can't come to Wellington and not add on the day trip. Amazing.